Okay. Dracula arrives on Earth. A spaceship arrived on Earth in the far distant future and found a pre-industrial society of green-skinned humanoids um, living here who were a gentle, kind, and fun-loving people who worshipped a mean and vindictive god. The mythology surrounding this god hints at the possibility that he might be one of the fugitives from the Osiris Collective that the space uh, ship had been hunting. So they, the spaceship released billions of neonites into the atmosphere to be carried by the wind to the four corners of the world in search of the Assyrian criminal. Believing that if he does surface or if it's detected by the nanites, it will it, it will trigger a thermal nuclear war, a thermal nuclear reaction, and the planet's entire atmosphere will be instantly vaporized, and all that will remain is a spinning rock in space. But in doing so, they gave Dracula. The one thing he had so desperately needed, fresh, uninfected nanites with which to repurpose and repair his old ship that had been infected with a parasitical space nanite virus um, from a, from a uh, solar cloud that he had passed through. Uh, on his way to the Earth, and even as the Earth's atmosphere burnt away, his ship, now an ark, was zooming off into deep space, continuing his time in exile while he strives towards ascension and elevation to true godlike status among his worshippers. And, uh, and the day that he returns to his world ascended and wipes out his enemies slaying them all uh dracula victorious now this is uh, dracula meets the nazis let me get this back up to the beginning almost yep dracula versus the nazis 1944. Dracula, during World War II, um, had been captured by the Nazis. The Nazis had captured him when an Allied bombing run had opened up the sublevel to an old castle, collapsing it uh, deep into the sublevels. Uh, but oh, uh, um, and there the Nazis found Dracula pinned under a massive weight deep within the earth and um, the body crushed underneath it and they were quite surprised when Dracula began moving it trying to shift trying to shift the uh, the great weight that had crushed him so they pointed their guns at him and fired dozens upon dozens of bullets fired into this living corpse until all believed him to be dead. He had to be dead. No one could have survived that. But interestingly enough, he did. Dracula refused to die. This was strange, such a bizarre occurrence. Uh, the drained of blood, Dracula still continued to struggle and move. Um, a living corpse. So looking at each other, they nodded in silence. They knew, oh, come on. They knew what, exactly what to do with him. Let's send him to see the doctor. Yes, yeah, that's agreed. Let's send him to see the doctor. So that is what they did. They had Dracula's body transported to the lab and heavy chains and manacles under heavy guard on the off chance that he recovered. They kept their guns trained on him at all times. When they arrived at the lab, the doctor, young and handsome, with a highly stylized mannerism, clearly a man of great culture and upbringing, smiled at the guards and was very interested in hearing more about this corpse that would not die. 
What followed were days of experiments and observation, as the doctor formulated his theories and propositions on this creature's the doctor saw himself in the role he played in the world as one of serving the greater good. And his ability to do what others could not as a gift, he saw himself as blameless, a simple observer. For he did what he did in the name of science. He believed himself a good man. And as his deeds an act of selflessness and generosity, he served the greater good, and he did so willingly, proudly, and uh, and uh, that's a good word, very proudly. When the doctor realized that Dracula required a blood transfusion, he tricked a soldier into getting close enough to Dracula's lifeless body that Dracula was able to catch the soldier by surprise and quickly drained his body of blood. The doctor found that all quite interesting, taking several notes. He also found Dracula's reaction to both sunlight and silver to be incredibly uh, uh, interesting. Uh, when, when he thrust Dracula's arm into the sunlight, it burst into flame, and Dracula screamed with pain and suffering. And then when, when, uh, when the doctor touched um, uh, Dracula's uh, arm with silver, it was as if you could see the blood under Dracula's skin boil. You could see it, causing again causing Dracula intense pain and suffering. This was all very interesting indeed. So now the doctor began experimenting upon Dracula by injecting various metals and chemicals directly into Dracula's bloodstream and body parts. Then when the doctor injected mercury directly into the eyeball of Dracula, he saw it explode. And Dracula's scream uh, was so intense, it was the first time the doctor had heard such an expression of uncontrollable terror expressed by this creature. Um, this was a new level of terror, and the doctor took a moment to breathe it all in and savor it. It was all quite fascinating and, dis and instructive. The doctor kept quiet, kept accurate and particular notes and diagrams of it all. For his future lectures at the university in Berlin, and then Dracula on his own this time tricked another guard into getting too close and quickly snatched him up and drained him of blood. And this time after being fed by another unsuspecting soldier, not only did he fully recover, but his eye grew back as well. So when interviewed by the doctor at this amazing achievement, how the hell did your eye grow back? Dracula explained to the uh, doctor that he had tiny machines inside of him that traveled about his bloodstream, that repaired and maintained his body. That was why he could not die, because they would always bring him back time after time. Hearing this, the doctor got an, got an idea for yet another experiment. Machines need electricity to function, he thought. So he delivered a massive electrical shock to Dracula's nervous system that completely fried it as Dracula danced on the slab, refusing to die as the doctor dialed up the current until Dracula was completely burnt away right down to the bone, totally lifeless and burnt to a crisp with no circulatory systems remaining. He was just bone. I've done it, thought the doctor. I have killed Dracula. Then he sent a soldier into the now silver-lined cell to collect the bones of Dracula. When Dracula had fully recovered, Dracula seemed to have lost his memory. Quite fascinating, thought the doctor. He did not seem to recognize the doctor at all, a man he was by now intimately familiar with. 
He looked at the doctor as one would a complete stranger, as if the doctor had been forgotten by this creature. The doctor's anger at having been forgotten by this creature swelled up inside of him at the act of having been forgotten. <coughs> he wanted to scream with rage, but steadied himself instead, and then smiled, regained his composure, um, and uh, turned towards his female assistant. Um, he needed a distraction to get his mind off of the insolent creature in possession of technology that was far beyond our understanding. But the pain, the suffering, the fear, the doctor could see that even though Dracula was God-like, he was, in fact, no god. This was all quite interesting to the doctor, calling for further investigation. Um... The doctor could see, okay, yeah. Uh, and as the doctor, uh, during his stroll, oh, um, and during a stroll outside of the lab to collect his thoughts, the doctor, uh, uh, walked out into the bright sunlight, thinking that he would retrieve a specialized diamond tipped cutting tool that he kept for special occasions and now had a possible use for. When he heard back in the lab screams and firing, um, the, 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 the machine guns, the rifles, uh, it, it, it was like there was, all hell was breaking loose uh, coming from inside his lab. Uh, and he did not hesitate for a moment. Switching to survival mode, he... He did not return to the lab. He instead abandoned it and fled for his life straight back to Berlin. And then days later, troops he sent in to recover and report it on his lab reported that the doctor's lab had been completely destroyed by the fire and that all research files and data had been lost. This monster covers his tracks well, thought the doctor. What in God's name was it? Oh, well. It was interesting enough, thought the doctor, but he had other thought experiments he wished to carry out upon the more human-like patients in the camps. The camps, thought the doctor to himself. Oh, how he loved spending time at the camps. The smell of burning flesh in the morning, it smelt like victory. Okay, that's that's the Nazis versus Dracula. It was uh, I was trying to I was trying to explain how uh, Dracula had lost his memory. Oh, let me bring that up. Turn it off.